All right, let's talk about some Lion football real quick. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And, um, yeah, a lot of injuries, and Hawkinson is tearing it up. It seems like Hawkinson is going to make that uh, monumental year one and year two jump that a lot of tight ends make like George Kittle made, and he made another monumental jump for the 49ers from year two to three, and he got a, a record deal for tight ends um, this offseason. But let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Appreciate the love, support. Well, the Lions – is suffering a lot of injuries, especially in the backfield. I mean, I heard Huntley was kind of missing out there. Uh, Bo Scarborough is injured again. Uh, Kerry, I mean, uh, DeAndre Swift is injured. So it's an injury, injury field backfield. And also Desmond Trufant is injured. Uh, I think uh, Kenny Galladay uh, got injured. Big V walked off today. Joe Dell is, uh, you know, out today. So right now it doesn't sound like any catastrophic injuries. Just sound like basic camp injuries. And you got to know Michigan heat a little bit different. Um, you know, then a regular 86 and 90 degree day, that's humid. You know what I'm saying? It don't have a southern hot uh, that Florida got with the humidity, but it got the it got the Florida humidity, just with not the southern heat. And right now, that's going to cause a lot of people to be off with with, with spasms, with a uh, with a uh, back with muscle spasms and anything that you know come from dehydration. So a lot of these players got to hydrate a lot better. And Patricia kind of got to taper the practice off, so he won't get a lot of these injuries. But Right now, the backfield is looking scarce, and I'm hearing Ty Johnson is looking pretty good. And if Huntley don't get on that white horse and ride it, he's going to be in a little bit of trouble uh, not making the team and probably going to the practice squad because Ty Johnson is balling. And the Williams kid from the coast is balling too, and he's showing some uh, you know, multidimensional skills off the backfield. So it may be a situation where Bo Scarborough may not make the squad if he don't come in healthy, even though he's our only true power back on the team. For short yards, and I feel that he should be able to hang on and cling on and make the team from that aspect. But to be honest, man, these injuries are piling up. But as long as we don't get the catastrophic season ending injury, especially to Matthew Stafford, Stafford go down, our, our season is over with automatically. And that's one of the reasons I didn't have an issue last year with Stafford getting injured. Because, I mean, you know, with Stafford getting injured because, or everybody else getting injured after Stafford, is because once Stafford go down, it's over with. We don't have a respectable backup last year. Or this year, so if you're going to go down with a major injury, now was the time. You know what I'm saying? So now we got everybody back healthy. Hopefully, True Fine is healthy. Hopefully, uh, all everybody else get healthy. Bo, Swift, they get healthy. And, and it's only been, what, one week of training camp so far because the previous weeks were just strength and conditioning and walkthroughs and stuff of that nature. So they did some seven on seven, but you put the pads on and you ain't, you know, you ain't really put the pads on so, in some time. You're going to get those injuries. And exchanging blows in training camp is about hardening the body where you can absorb those blows for the season. So football is a very physical sport. Your prime isn't long at, at all. And hopefully all those guys get healthy. But I don't know who that is. These guys, they bark at everything. But um, uh, to continue on, TJ Hawkinson is actually tearing it up in camp. And that's some good things that we want to hear. Um, they said that he can't be guarded. He said they best tight end guarder. And Tracy Walker, he abused him. He abusing everybody, and that's what you're trying to hear. And hopefully, the only thing that can hold him back is Daryl Bevel don't draw offense up that features him. And Daryl Bevel shouldn't stop there. He should draw offense that features both Jesse James and TJ Hawkinson, and they will be unguardable. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if Josh McDaniels had those two guys. The things that he would do inside the red zone and outside the red zone is unthinkable, and that's what you need to hear. If you get somebody to control the middle of the field, last year I thought, you know, Hawkinson would control the middle of the field, but Amendola would be the ultimate middle of the, control, the middle of the field controller, but uh, they both kind of suffered injuries, and Hawkinson kind of didn't go the right way after week one, but right now, you know, working with, you know, that new strength and conditioning coach that George Kittle worked with, he should be going to the next level, and they able to go to the next level with Hawkinson, then Galladay just going to be that more potent, but, you know, all that can go in vain if they don't run the ball. That's what it boiled down to. Hearing Taylor Decker having an excellent camp, I'm hearing that he he's shutting out Trey Flowers, and that tend to happen when you got a contract year. You know what I'm saying? That's never really been an issue with him. He is stiff as a pass rusher, as a pass blocker, but he get the job done. The issue with him is he has to be able to move mountains and create running lanes and seal the outside so Johnson, Swift, Bo, Ty, Huntley, Williams all can run outside West Hill. All can run outside the tackle. Run blocking has been his biggest issue. And if he got stronger, then be it. I look I look forward to him having a career year trying to get that contract extension. You know what I'm saying? So if he go out there and he block well, he's been hearing great things about Big V in camp. They're able to seal the outsides in. 
if Jonah Jackson get up to speed, and we know with Frank Ragnar, he's taking another monumental step forward. This offensive line may produce a really, really good running game coming pretty soon. You know, so, you know, if, if it's holding true and, and, and that translates to the season with with um, with um uh, with Decker and with Big V and with Ragnar, we know what he's doing. And Jonah Jackson, we can get something out of whoever's going to start, Dale or whoever it's going to be because they got rid of Josh Garnett. You know, this offensive line might be decent. We just asked them to protect Stafford and open run holes. But, you know, if all this continue the whole way, this early in camp, and, and Todd, Todd keep improving and, and Hawkinson keep improving and he keep running the routes and being um, unfadable out there, you know, the Lions might be headed for something special because they got more offensive weapons than anybody in the NFC North, in my opinion. You know, you got Cook uh, and the Vikings. They lost Diggs. They still got Thielen. Irv Smith is pretty good. Kyle Rudolph is pretty good, as we know. Go to Green Bay, really Devontae Adams, a year two tight end, a rookie tight end. Their running back was A.J. Dillon and um, Aaron Jones. You know, they, they're pretty good. Devin Funches opted out. Chicago, Allen Robinson, Anthony Miller. Um, and then they got uh, Tyreek Cohen and uh, David Montgomery in the backfield. That's cool. But if you look at the Lions, you know, you got Swift, you got Johnson, you got Hawkinson, you got James, you got Amendola, you got Jones Jr., you got Kenny Galladay. And if Hawkinson is able to step up, you know, and Amendola able to control the middle of the field and able to run run the ball. The Lions' offense might be scary, and Stafford can stay healthy. He was efficient last year. If they run the ball, he's just going to be more efficient. He may not go out there and throw 50 touchdowns, but he may go out there and, um, you know, basically be efficient, you know what I'm saying, and be more efficient in the red zone. That's all he needed, needed was a run game, and I think Stafford would have took off many, many years ago, but – you're hearing a lot of good things in camp. We talked about yesterday, Okuda can continue to improve. Um, you know what I'm saying? Hunter Bryant also went out with an injury. So the injury bug is going around, and maybe it's the human heat that uh, is, is doing the injury. But maybe they're practicing too hard. And I'm pretty sure a lot of teams are practicing hard, you know, trying to make up for lost time and none of those other mini camps or voluntary workouts. And you can't do that. I'd rather be, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather, I'd rather scale it back. And scale it up and lose a lot of my top players. So, um, yeah, they practicing hard. Um, you know, actually look forward to uh, the season. And hopefully we get some of these injury guys, injured guys back. Marvin Hall still injured. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we get some of these dudes back and, you know, we have a good season with or without fans. But it would be lying like to win the Super Bowl without fans being in attendance. But you know what? I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but hey, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out if you have a business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video request. Keep sharing the videos. Appreciate the love, support. Want to make a donation to the channel? Uh, Cash App is Good through and three PayPal link there as well. Best way to donate though is to share, share the video. Appreciate the love, support. Let me know what you guys think. One time for the one time. We gone.